Hello, I'm Ben Wattenberg. Our guest today is a revolutionary libertarian from Chile. Jose Piñera has a most remarkable story to tell and a powerful idea to peddle. Some hope and others fear that it is an idea whose time has come. The worker is a king in, that, in the sense that he owns his money. He's a capitalist. The topic before the House, how Chile solved Social Security. This week on Think Tank. As Americans grow older, more and more is heard about a potential crisis in Social Security. One proposed remedy comes from an unlikely source, the faraway and sparsely populated South American nation of Chile. The man who is encouraging Americans to think differently is Jose Piñera, Chile's former Minister of Labor and Social Security. How did this country of slightly over 14 million people with one of the highest economic growth rates in the world, come to be a beacon for free market economists to the north. Well, it is a, an interesting experiment on the transfer of ideas. This all began in the 50s, when the Catholic University of Chile made an agreement with the University of Chicago of exchanging professors and students. The best three students of the Economics Institute of Chile will go to Chicago have a graduate study period there with the compromise of going back to teach for double the time at the university in Chile. So at that moment we really began to receive what I could call Anglo-Saxon economics, not even Chicago economics. That is that line of economics that goes back to Adam Smith, and here is the tie, to, to David Ricardo, to, to the classical liberals. And in Chile, this country, we began having a curriculum where every student learned about that uh, great tradition of market liberalism. But while free market ideas were trickling down from the so-called Chicago boys, the political situation in Chile was taking a very different turn. In 1970, Salvador Allende, a Marxist, was elected president with a slender plurality of the vote, 36%. Three years later, amidst protests in the streets, the Chilean Congress declared by a 60% vote that the Allende government had violated the Constitution. Led by General Pinochet, a military junta composed of the four chiefs of the armed forces took over the government. During the quasi-civil war and after, the evening news was filled with images of abuses of human rights. But something else was going on as well there was this uh, free market economic revolution. We uh, went almost to free trade. We liberalized prices. We privatized state-owned companies. We did the big social reforms in social security, in education, in health. We gave power to the people. The criticism is human rights, as you know very well. And the answer is, when there is a quasi-civil war, uh, there are uh, uh, problems. Uh, uh, we should not uh, uh, accept them, we should always condemn them, but they are that kind of situation and are very difficult to analyze. We are in a huge gray area there. But the important thing is that the government, and mainly because of the Chicago boys, was going toward liberalizing the economy and society. And then we fought very strongly for the government to uh, put a, date, a deadline for the transition toward democracy. And finally, as you know very well, there was a peaceful transition within the constitution approved by the military government. It's an incredible story. Jose Piñera is constantly on the road, preaching pension privatization all over the world with some notable success. But is what works in Chile good for America? In a subsequent program, we will hear about that. Now, Jose Piñera's story. When did the Social Security reform start? At the end of 1978, I was 30 years old, explaining in TV that even though we had done some of the 
macroeconomic reform, balancing the budget, lowering inflation, we should go into the stage of structural reforms in the social sectors, education, health, or security. It was the, the profit of those reforms. So when I am called by the president of Chile, I was 30 years old, uh, I was at that time a professor, and he says, you have those ideas, we all know in Chile you have been on TV, I believe enormously in the, in the media, in the power of, of, of TV, in the power of ideas. Ideas have consequences, Ben, and you know that, that's why yeah. you have this program. Right. And he said to me, uh, you want to change the Chilean social security system? Yes, Mr. President. Well, you can do it. Well, Mr. President, whom should I advise? No, my friend, he said. No, no, my friend, not Mr. Piñera. If you want to do it, you sit at the front wheel and you take the risk. I will not take it. I am, I am above this. It will be your idea. You go and explain it to the people. You convince the people. You convince even me because I like your idea, but I, I'm not sure. You have to convince a lot of people. So I went into the government. I began working on this. I assembled a very good team, young people, enthusiastic people, who knew that social security was a terrible deal for them, as yes, it is for the young generation of America. No, we didn't talk about that yet. Yes. I, we uh, uh, devised this new idea that maybe we can talk again. Then I began to sell it to the people. I went on TV. Uh, Th what, what year is this now? This year, 1980. Mm -hmm. And I began every week in TV a three-minute commentary. Because I believe people don't like to see politicians or ministers for more than three minutes in TV. They generally sap away. Right. So I went the first day, I remember, and I told them, I will tell you something that will change your lives. But give me three minutes every week. It's nothing. So the first time I told them, do you know how much money you have in your Social Security account? Have Probably not, because I am the minister, and I do not know. Next week, I will bring you a solution. That was odd. Next week, I came with a little passbook that is very famous in Chile, because every worker has a passbook like this now. It's a pension savings account passbook, where monthly, instead of sending the payroll tax to the government, to the black hole, as some people call it, of Social Security, they send it to the pension passbook, and they know how much money they have. So I came with a passbook like this. There were no passbooks, of course. It was a saving passbook. And I said, would you like rather to have a passport like this and to know at every moment how much money you have and it's your own money. It's sitting there where your eyes can see it. We have a, a saying in Spanish, donde tus ojos te vean, where your eyes can see it. That's where people want to have the money. So the money is there in the passbook. The worker is a king in, that, in the sense that he owns his money. He's a capitalist. And the money grows over all his life. So you campaigned on television for six months. Yes, and at that moment, in the streets, the people began coming to me. Mr. Minister, that's a very good idea. Our money, where our eyes can see, when are you going to present it? One day, I remember with my cabinet colleagues who were very skeptic six months before, even some of the generals, some of them began to tell me, we were at the barbecue the other day, because even generals go to barbecues. Mm -hmm. And all the neighbors were talking about your little passbook. Where are you going to introduce the bill, Jose? Now we were on first name basis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went to the people, and the people goes up to the leaders. Because uh, wait a minute, but now let me ask a question. Was there a vote? No. Regrettably, in a revolutionary situation, you do not have elected leaders until you go toward the transition, toward right. democracy. So that was not something I could choose. I could not choose my times. Uh, of course, we know that we were under that kind of government, but, but, was, I was, was aware was, of was that. Was there any suggestion by the Pinochet government, let's have a referendum on this specific item before we do it? I suggested it. I suggested that I believe so strongly in this idea, and I have seen the reaction of the people, that I wanted my kind of a, 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 a crowning achievement to have this approved by a n national referendum in which I will defend the system against whoever wants to stand right. against me. So, since I could not have a direct national referendum, do you know what I did? I told the government, we should uh, introduce this idea on a voluntary basis. That is, we should tell every worker that they are free to stay in the government-run system or to move to the new system on a free basis. So, in a way, Ben, we had a right. social referendum, because right. if people had not believed this idea, if people had simply had not been persuaded by, by argument that this was mm -hmm. a better system, they could have stayed in the old system, 
journalists were coming to me as the minister in charge. How many people will move, uh, Mr. Minister? I don't know. All my friends and all my family have promised me that they will move, but I do not have a million friends. But did you have to go and register or you something? You have to go and register. So I don't know. Let's say 1% the first month to put a number. In the first month, 25% of the Chilean eligible labor workforce moved from the old system to the new one in one month. The problem was the opposite. The companies were not prepared to receive this avalanche of people that prefer to have their money here rather than in the hands of the political system. At the end of the first year, 70% of the people had moved. Today, 93% of the people have moved. So in a way, Ben, we had a social referendum, even though I would have preferred, let me be frankly, to have done it through a democratic process. But in a revolution, you do not have that chance. Later. Okay. Now, Mr. Former Minister, could you give us in a capsule uh, what the Chilean Social Security Plan uh, provides for? Well, it is a reform basically of old age uh, uh, system, uh, social security system. We had a pay-as-you-go system, the same as in America. What we did in Chile was to say, instead of sending the payroll tax to the government, why do not allow people to invest that money into an individual pension savings account? That's why I call this the PSA system, the pension saving account system. So every month, the worker puts 10% of his wage, the same amount, more or less, that he was sending before to the government. So he, we are not asking for extra saving to a worker. He generally doesn't have it. Into this account. And the money grows here because it is invested in the market, so it grows with compound interest, with this extraordinary force. He cannot withdraw the money until retirement age. When the worker, he or she, we have a lot of women working in Chile, reaches retirement age, they have a huge capital in relation to their salary in this account. And at that moment, the worker can turn that capital either into an annuity in a life insurance company, so as to have a constant income for life, or the worker can choose to keep the ownership of the capital, and if he or she were to die, the money goes to the heirs as inheritance. So at every moment, the important point to, no to notice is that the worker owns this money. It is protected by the law of the land, even by the Constitution. There is competition. There is free entry into the industry. We have now something like 15 of these mutual funds managing the account. So the worker can choose. If he doesn't like this company, he goes to this one. And if he doesn't like this one, he goes to this one. Since his um, money is invested in the markets, the funds have a daily value. So it's very easy. It's just changing your checking account. So the worker is the king. Companies go after the worker. Please, Mr. Worker, why don't you come with us? We will treat you well. We will give you a good rate of return. We will treat you with dignity, something that people like. What has the, the, uh, the average annual growth of the average of, of, of the total portfolio well, has been? Too good to be true. 12% above inflation each year during 16 years. That is close to Warren Buffett. Not, not so good. <laughs> now, when I explain the system, I said, with only 4% real, it will be a better deal than the old system. So really, I do not sell the system on the idea of a 12% rate of return. The power of this system is that we have allowed every worker, especially the poorest one, to benefit from the most extraordinary power, full force in economics, the power of compound interest. So President Reagan used to say the magic of compound The interest. magic. I take it immediately from the great communicator. Right. I have changed my discourse. Okay. The magic of compound interest. Every investor knows that. Since, uh, since the, the, whoever invested banking. But never the workers have been able to benefit from this power because workers reach the end of the month without enough money to, in, to save. So what I have done is to give every worker in Chile, and now millions of workers in Latin America, as I will tell you later, the possibility of benefiting themselves from the magic of compounding. So is the Chilean system the way the American is that both the worker and the employer contributes? Well, that is uh, an illusion, Ben. Uh, in, in Economics 1, you learn that 
all the contribution comes from the work, from the marginal productivity of labor. And when lawmakers believe that they have tell the employer you put 50% and the worker 50%, basically the employer takes it from the wage of the work, from the gross wage. So we had that system also before. And we eliminated that illusion. That was a, a, a sophistication of our system, that you can do it or not. No, I understand. Uh, Does the government, under your plan in Chile, guarantee a certain return? Not as they wanted me to guarantee a certain return. They said the government cannot do that. Governments are not gods, only God can guarantee us a return for the whole population of a country. We cannot guarantee a return. What we did was the following. The government guarantees at the end of the worker life a minimum pension. That's there's what a I safety meant. Right. Yes, right. but there is yeah. not a rate of no, return. No, 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 I'm sorry. That, that's uh, what I it's meant. a right. safety net. I was adamant that every worker, even the lowest paid one in the inner city, get a passport like this. And they save 10% of the wage instead of sending it as a payroll tax. It's the substitute of the payroll tax. It's not additional saving. But some people may reach 65, and because they have been unemployed, or because they have had all, always the lowest wage, may not have enough capital into the account to buy what we call a minimum annuity, a minimum pension. Then, and only then, comes the government and fills the glass. That is, the glass is half empty. Everyone has some amount of money. No, the government fills the glass so that everyone has a minimum pension. And above that, your pension depends on the capital accumulated in your account. What happens in between 1929 and 1933 or so, I forget the exact date, uh, dates, the American stock market lost a lot. Okay, okay. Lost. And, and, and I know your answer already. Well, it recovered. And over any 10 year period. But you don't know that you couldn't, you might not have a 20 or 30 year vastly depressed stock market. We don't know that. No, you have never had that, Ben. I never. understand. We never, never in had, a 10 year but, but period. But we never had the depression before we had the depression. No, but on the contrary, we, al we already know, and Milton Friedman has done a great work mm -hmm. on how the depression was uh, exacerbated by wrong monetary policy. So, the, w uh, you yes, see, wrong, wrong monetary uh, policy is is uh, in our genes. We we always okay. make mistakes. I mean, people make mistakes. Even Ben, if you Minister have a, if you have the stock exchange right. going down three years, you will have much bigger problems, my friend. Much bigger problems. It has never happened in history. More than a, a given period of one two years, and it has recuperated immediately. Never in a ten, ten year period in America, the stock exchange has been lower than at the beginning, and in a seventy year period, the stock market has given you an eight percent real rate of return. Even in, if in that 70 year period I put the big depression, the second world war, Vietnam, Watergate, the oil crisis, still with all those events, the market has given you 8% on average over 70 years. So the important okay. thing is that you are saving over 40 years. Right. So I will agree with that if you were to tell me how if the world goes down during 40 years, but then okay. it's another world. Okay, the United States of America. Uh, different country, different traditions, different history. How do you go about instituting this in the United States? Well, first let me tell you... Uh, I mean, we, uh, unlike Chile, we would have to have a vote. Of course, but of in, course. In, 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 in of the course. Congress, okay. As, 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 ha as, as, ha as has been the case in six other Latin American countries that I have explained the system after Chile, and discuss this with presidents of Argentina, Peru, Colombia, Bolivia, El Salvador, and they have had a vote. And in the next few months, it will be implemented in Mexico, Bolivia, and El Salvador. So on New Year's Eve, uh, Ben, I will have some, a little cup of champagne, in your honor, uh, celebrating seven countries with the Chilean system. But the United States today, I don't know the exact figure, is paying out $200 billion a year in pensions. Yes. All of a sudden, Jose Pinares comes here and turns the spigot and says, government, you're not getting the $200 billion a year. The government says, gee, that's funny, Mr. Minister, I, but I have to pay the $200 billion a year. And I, the government, Mr. Government, Uncle Sam turns to you and says, Jose, where's the beef? Where's the beef? First of all, I did it 17 years ago in a country like Chile. Mm -hmm. And today, Chile is running a budget surplus of 2% of GNP a year. So if, if you want it fast, no, no, we no, were no, able no. to do it, we were able to finance, this is the so-called 
financing of the transition and maybe we should have another program on that well, program that because it's very a, complicated a, a, but let me no, tell no, you we, i'm sorry it can't be complicated okay. it's got to be simple okay. you're 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 you got to go to a vote here you, okay. people are going to say okay you know, where's the beef how do you do it the beef is that that is the problem of the unfunded liability right. that the government already has in America, there is an unfunded social security liability that there is a discussion it can be between five and nine right. trillion, depends on no, projections. No, but that is a sunken cost. It's something that is there. Uh, the other day, I but was. But there is a mechanism to pay it off. Okay, but that's. And you are taking away the mechanism. We create, we, we, it's, we create another mechanism. We just recognize that debt. We, the technical term is that we collateralize that debt and we create a new mechanism to pay that debt. The debt is there anyway. Look, I had a discussion of this with Alan Greenspan only a week ago in front of Senator Phil Graham, among other people. And, and he came out, he's a brilliant man, he came out and said, yes, that is an unfunded liability. We have it anyway. We have it anyway. That is a problem that you have a, a, a acquired because of the pay-as-you-go nature. If we were keeping our bookkeeping in terms of accrued rights, as every private company would have to do it, this problem will not even arise because the private company will have a funded uh, uh, the liability and here the money. What happens is that the U.S. government does not have its account in that way, but you have the unfunded liability anyway. So you have to find a transition mechanism because this is bipartisan. No, I this, is, this has nothing to do with the Democrats and the Republicans. This is the 21st century idea against a 19th century Prussian idea because you know all this was created by Chancellor von Bismarck in Prussia. And that's how I would approach it in the U.S. I would say, we are saving Social Security here by changing radically the way it is provided. Jose Pinera is an inspired man here. with an ambitious proposal, sense. every man a capitalist. Sense, but would that make sense in America? Could it be implemented in a truly democratic vote? For all the criticism we hear about Social Security, most Americans depend on it. It started in a blizzard of controversy in 1936 as part of President Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal, and it was denounced by many conservatives. These days, politicians of all stripes salute it, even as some seek to change and improve it. In a subsequent program, we will focus on the pros and cons of this idea of making every man a capitalist in America. Meanwhile, Jose Pinera continues to peddle his papers, preaching revolutionary capitalism in faraway places. Tell me what happened in China. Oh, we were last week, two weeks ago in China, in Shanghai, in a, in a Cato seminar, uh, days before the, the, the handover of Hong Kong, uh, uh, explaining the Chinese that they have followed the wrong little passport. They have followed, of course, Mao Zedong. Here is Chairman Mao quotation. I always carry it with me because <laughs> Ben, I learned there that school children had to memorize this book and this book destroyed property rights, the rule of law, personal freedoms. That is a wonderful country with an ancient culture, a country that I loved, destroyed by communist ideas, by this little passport. So I went there and I told them, rather than Chairman Mao passport, you should have Piñera passport. <laughs> <laughs> the pen. This is a little book also, but this is a book that makes people owners. This is a book that links them to the benefit of the economy. This is, a, this is a book protected by the rule of law. So instead of Chairman Mao, the pension saving account. But uh, let me tell you that I believe that after the handover, it may be the reverse handover. It may be that China has swallowed a freedom virus. I know that the people in Beijing believe that they will take over Hong Kong. That is a free country, a, a free market experiment, an extraordinary one. Maybe China has swallowed a freedom virus. And that just And to China will turn in two, two decades, three, four, into a free market economy and maybe into a free society. And thank you very much because you are a global peddler of the freedom virus. So thank you, uh, Jose Pinares, and thank you for Think Tank. I'm Ben Wattenberg. We at Think Tank depend on your views to make our show better. Please send your questions and comments to 
New River Media, 11507th Street Northwest, Washington, D.C. 20036. Or email us at thinktank at pbs.org. To learn more about Think Tank, visit PBS online at www.pbs.org. And please let us know where you watch Think Tank. This has been a production of BJW Incorporated in association with New River Media, which are solely responsible for its content.